Hey YouTubers, it's Danielle here again. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are here with my review for part two of the Crisis on Earth X crossover. I watched it yesterday through YouTube TV and might I say, this crossover all in all from like all the episodes I've watched, it literally topped off what last year's was. Last year was, um, was the invasion of the Dominators. So this season, this season with these episodes for the crossover, they killed it. So yeah, I have to say that overall, I really enjoyed these two episodes of Flash and Legends. And I do have to say that all in all, everything was really good this season. So I do have to say that this is probably my favorite crossover I think I've seen from the Arrowverse thus far. So if you guys are brand new here, you can be subscribed to my channel by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell to be notified. And make sure to comment and like and support the the channel as a whole. And also, if you guys hear any music in the background, it's because I'm I was in the process of creating a new character for DC Universe Online. And um let's just say that i'm in the process of trying to pick out the name for this character i chose batman as my mentor with this new one speedster abilities because i want to be like the flash and i believe i work with gadgets and i believe that another like ability that i have is actually bow and arrow <laughs> so my kind of pathetic idea of trying to fuse Green Arrow and Flash together into like one character but you know what um I'm the name will come to me at some point but everything that I've tried picking so far is taken so kind of bummed about that but um let's get into this review so um as we know it let Arrow ended off with them all being in some sort of concentration camp and then being captured by the Nazis and it's actually really really sad to see it all there in front of you because it really does give you like an inside look of what a concentration camp looks like during that time and what it could look like during modern day if the Nazis had won World War II and um, as you can imagine there were Jews inside that concentration camp wearing the yellow stars but then Jefferson Jackson asks one of the prisoners the ray you know what does the pink triangle mean he says it means that I love the wrong person and obviously that means because that obviously means he's wearing the pink triangle because he is gay and unfortunately that was a major part of World War II and Nazi Germany they took thousands of people, Jews, homosexuals, Catholics, just about every single person that was viewed as abnormal to them, they all put them in those camps to execute them. And it actually is pretty sad if you think about it because it's it, it really does remind you of how far we've come from all of that and how far we've evolved into accepting different people and different religions and different sexualities and I think that this crossover really does make you sort of appreciate the fact that we have come this far and that we're not living in a world that violent anymore and that we're not living with Nazis like taking over our country or taking over anything for that matter so I think that this episode of Flash really does kind of remind you to, you know, count your blessings and really, you know, make you feel appreciative. And I think that that definitely did strike a nerve. And I think that one of the hardest things for me to actually see was actually Quentin Lance as a Nazi and him approaching Sarah. Like, that was probably one of the hardest things I had to see, I believe, because you see Barry and Oliver with like the shock collars on them and Barry's speed is obviously dampened because that's a power dampener but he's like you know why do why does Oliver Alex and Sarah have power dampeners on but obviously they're more than just power dampeners they are also electro shock collars used to keep them in line if they try to get out of line and fight back so, um, 
So when we see them inside the camp, it's obviously pretty gritty, as you can imagine. And we see the images of, like, everybody in the striped, like, pajamas, as you would call it. Because I did watch that movie, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Like, that was actually one of the saddest movies about the Holocaust I think I've ever seen in my life. But um, I think that it was actually really sad for me to see Quentin Lane quentin lance come up to sarah as kind of like this nazi figure and it was actually really really sad when sarah tells him you know because i love both men and women equally in a sexual way like romantically she is attracted to both men and women she's bisexual so quentin essentially tells her you know i had once had a daughter like you but i killed her because she continued to love the wrong person and it actually does kind of break your heart a little bit there because to think that Sarah's doppelganger on that earth is dead because of her sexuality it actually does kind of scare you greatly and it definitely does like it's it's a little bit heartbreaking when you think about it and then they actually do try to fight back but they are hit with the electro shock collars like Oliver and Sarah are the first to try and fight back and resist but obviously they're all hit with electroshock collars. And the next thing you know, the Ray, um, they're all lined up about to be executed along with the Ray, Ray Terrell. And long behold, Leonard Snart's doppelganger, the good guy, Leo, shows up and thank God, like, I have to say that this version of Leonard Snart was probably my favorite because he was extra campy and he was very light and something very, very different from the Leonard Snart that we know and love. And obviously this version of him is sort of like Citizen Cold from Flashpoint because during Flashpoint, Captain Cold was the city's hero. (coughs) Captain Cold was the city's hero and his name was citizen cold so obviously he comes in with the cold gun and he says my name is leo and obviously they feel somewhat relieved that at least on this earth he's one of the good guys and um he breaks off ray's you know electro collar and he tells him you know you better close your eyes and ray and the ray essentially goes up into the air in like a burst of light and energy. I actually thought that to be a really cool shot. And then they all fight back and they go to what looks to appear to be Star City, the Arrow Cave, which is actually the base of the resistance or the insurgency or whatever you want to call it. So I do have to say that that was actually really, really cool to see that. But I think that one thing that I didn't really like too much was actually when as general shot like I felt as though that was kind of forced for me personally I felt like that was really kind of forced like I get it they were trying to make win sort of the opposite but I don't know I just didn't care for it too much but um you definitely did get a lot in this episode with like family dynamics and seeing a lot and you also got tons of easter eggs too and callbacks to like season one of flash as well because we see supergirl basically trapped in star labs strapped down to a surgery table and reverse flash is getting ready to cut her open and i said yesterday that that was actually earth x says um reverse flash no it was not it was eobarthon in the form of harrison wells from earth one who went to earth x to start all this crap up because he's a time traveler and he and every single thing that goes wrong on like any multiverse you know where to look it's always him it's always reverse flash he's always doing something to to like screw up the timeline no matter where you go because his main goal is to hurt barry for like practically no reason other than the fact that he just hates barry to the core so Obviously, we see Reverse Flash, like, commenting, you know, I spent 15 years in this facility, and I hated every minute of it. He built Star Labs from the ground up, spent 15 years in there, and essentially hated every single minute of it until the Flash was essentially born when Barry Allen was struck by lightning and put into a coma. And we see Supergirl and Overgirl interacting. Again, Melissa Benoist acted her tail off she worked her tail off in these scenes she was amazing and I feel as though 
seeing Supergirl and Overgirl interacting with each other with Overgirl basically explaining her idea of ruling people people and seeing that as like her own form of justice it's it's really twisted when you really think about it because you get two different versions of Kara and essentially seeing them both interacting with each other brought it for me I feel like that brought it for me in this episode and then we see Felicity and Iris actually in the air event trying to come up with a plan to save Kara and to get Cisco and Dinah and Renee and Harry and everybody out of the pipeline prison so they m managed to make their way down to the pipeline and I actually liked how they jumped down at the same time and they attacked Nazis like at the same time like in sync I actually did enjoy that because I got to see them be badasses for like once you know for like the first half of it they were sort of like holding they were sort of like being held back and sort of protected but this episode they really did kind of show with like the Nazi soldiers themselves that they don't need to necessarily rely on Barry and Oliver for their protection so I actually did actually I actually did really enjoy that and then we see Iris and Felicity like trying to get talk to Cisco through like the comm system in the pipeline and Cisco's like hey guys I'm in here and the next thing you know they're like Cisco are you in there and he goes yes and Dinah is in there Curtis is in there and those things are indestructible they cannot escape Dinah's trying to use her canary cry so badly it's actually kind of pathetic watching Dinah you know try to use her canary cry but I actually did enjoy that and Cisco goes you know that's what I designed these cells to do to make them inescapable and the next thing you know Harry is just back bouncing like a bouncing ball like against the cell just to annoy Cisco and half to death <laughs> and Caitlin and obvi obviously Caitlin Renee and Dinah they're kind of not amused by this at all but Harry's just annoyed by Cis Harry's just amused by Cisco being annoyed <laughs> and then Felicity and Iris realize that the hydraulic system is down in the pipeline and in order to free the other metas that are inside there being Cisco and all the others, they have to contact the rest of the legends, including Nate and Amaya and um and Ray and I do have to say that even though I'm not watching Legends this season, I actually did like the fact that they were brought in um towards like the Legends episode. I actually did enjoy that quite a bit. And in addition to that, um well we actually do see um, see, um, Iris and Felicity, like, figuring out, you know, we can shut down the electricity in the, in Star Labs to prevent, you know, Eobar from being able to cut Kara open, so they succeed in that, they do suck successfully succeed in that but problem is, is when they try to get Kara, like, outside into the sunlight, um, let's just say things, like, really do go downhill for Felicity and Iris from there but seeing them interacting with each other like that in ways that they haven't before I actually did enjoy seeing that friendship like budding between the two of them and I hope to see more of that in the near future because Emily Bat Ricards and Candace Penn do have an amazing chemistry and friendship that I do want to see translated on screen and um and then um I believe that the next part is actually when well actually I'm going to go over to the next part that sort of stood out to me and that is Alex and Sarah's interaction and they definitely do have an amazing chemistry together Alex and Sarah might I say probably my newest ship is Alex and Sarah I have to say that much as much as I'm starting to ship Evil Oliver and Evil Cara together because Stephen Amell and Melissa Benoist I'm sorry but they have more chemistry than Steven does with Emily. I'm just saying that much. Sorry, not sorry. Even though I am an Olicity shipper, I love Olicity, I do have to say, Steven and Melissa, much better chemistry. Much better. Yeah. So, um, so where was I saying this? Oh yeah, Alex and Sarah, they essentially bond over the fact that Alex doesn't want to put her, like, sister's life in danger. She's, like, worried that Eobard is going to essentially kill 
her sister. But Sarah goes, no, I lost my sister too. I lost Laurel. So seeing them bonding in that sense and Sarah basically promising Alex, you know, I'm not going to let what happened to Laurel happen to Kara. Like, that was actually a really sweet moment between them. And in addition to that, we also see Jackson Stein having more of that father-son type interaction that I always enjoy seeing. And in addition to that, we also learn that um, Ray Terrell and Leonard Snart are, in fact, a couple on Earth X. Which, I mean, it was kind of cute seeing them kiss. I mean, you know, I did enjoy that. But still, I still love Captain Canary, Snart, and Sarah together. I actually do enjoy them together. But Ray and Snart together, still kind of cute, but not as cute as snart and sarah so um so we figure out that um that inside one of the nazis bases is actually the wormhole to get to star labs on earth one and and um we see we actually see them like making the plan to like break into that base and they say you know we don't necessarily blend in here but oliver comes up with the idea to disguise himself as his evil doppelganger from Earth X wearing, you know, the Nazi, like, uniform and everything like that just to disguise himself. And we actually get a hint at, um, at Felicity Smoke and where she is, um, on Earth X. She's actually a Nazi prisoner and Oliver is essentially told by Quentin Lance on Earth X to kill her because, because essentially that's, his own way of like taunting Oliver because obviously Oliver is in love, in love, in love with Felicity on Earth One. So that's actually like pretty difficult for Oliver to have to do. And essentially he turns on Quentin and he attacks the Nazis and frees um, Felicity. So I actually did enjoy the fact that they like included that in there because that was actually like a really, really, really nice touch that they put in and they do eventually like make their way like through the base fighting their way through the action pack scene was amazing to see i loved seeing the action um sarah and alex again kicking ass um flash kicked ass with red tornado because essentially flash and the ray have to fight red tornado and red tornado is what they're is what general shot is being is sending there to blow up that wormhole and destroy like any chances of the earth one like heroes making their way home so it is really like it was really great to see um barry and the ray sort of interacting with each other in that sense but the ray's powers definitely were dumbed down apparently he's supposed to be as powerful as a green lantern so this is probably like the closest thing to like a green lantern type power that we're gonna get in the cw for a long time but i do understand why they dumbed down his powers because he is a bit of an overpowered character and then you have kara who's also overpowered you have um speedsters that are also overpowered so they're essentially all these overpowered heroes that you do have to find a way to sort of dumb down their powers just a little bit but the painful part was actually seeing stein sacrificing himself by getting shot um and he is like injured like so badly that he might not be able to even make it and that was actually really painful to watch stein sacrifice himself like that and Jack's like screaming no gray like I was my heart was breaking for Stein and Jax because like I couldn't even imagine and essentially actually they say you know you know even though though you know Stein can't survive on his own with his injuries with Jax fused together with him he they he can so they get into the breach they get on to the um they get onto the wave rider and they get Jax and stein medical attention immediately and we learn that Jax is also being affected by stein's injuries and that essentially actually one without the other pretty bad pretty pretty bad so you know stein can't last 
that long without, like, because essentially, if we remembered what happened during season two, Flash Stein cannot last through that long without, like, fusing together with somebody else. Like, he cannot go that long without that. So, that leaves it with that. And then we see Eobard making a second attempt at the surgery again on Kara after she, like, saves Felicity from getting killed by Reverse Flash. And he actually does bring up a major Easter egg in that, saying, you know, all these heroes, you know, Green Arrow, Black Canary, The Flash, but nobody remembers Felicity Smoke, which is actually not true, because in the comics, nobody, like, really, really knows who Felicity Smoke is, but this show is actually giving her, like, a lot more credit, because in the comics, she is considered, like, underrated. So the fact that they're sort of making her this sort of overrated character as some people might call her yeah she's gonna be underrated in a near future because nobody's gonna remember her so that's why they're making her so overrated now so that way we remember her for a long time a long time yeah and um and and actually, my favorite shot that I think I've seen was actually, um, was actually the, was actually Ray Palmer, the Adam, like, shrunken down to the size of a peanut, like, inside, um, Kara's body, preventing the knife from further penetrating her skin, and then he, like, pops out, and I was like, oh my god, that is so cool, and, that was sort of like a funny reference to Superman Returns where Brandon Ralph played Superman and he actually did like make an Easter egg to that because Carr goes, you know, my cousin and then he shows up, Ray. So really great there. Really, really great there. So and then they eventually do release all the other like men humans from the pipeline and they fight um, that robot that's from Kara's Earth. I don't essentially remember the name of that robot, but all I know is that it was pretty damn powerful, and they were going at it, like, completely. They were completely going at it and going all in. They were hitting it with everything that they had, which was great. And I think that the scene where Oliver threatens to kill Earth-X Kara in front of Earth-X Oliver, who's about to kill Felicity of Earth One. Um, I do have to say that that was actually a really powerful moment seeing that like Olicity moment because Oliver goes, you know, I would kill her, her, unless if you let, you know, Felicity go. And essentially, essentially, you know, he doesn't kill Kara of Earth X, but Felicity is let go. And she does apologize to Oliver for saying, you know, loudly that she didn't want to marry him during Barry and Iris's, um, rehearsal dinner so I do have to say that um that that was actually a really sweet moment between the two of them and I actually did enjoy that and um and next we actually learn that Stein's condition is getting a lot worse and Caitlin doesn't want to break the bad news to Jax that that other half of him is getting like a lot worse than you know, what she's letting on, and Stein essentially begs Jax to give him that cure, Cisco's drug that Cisco had cooked up for them, to separate them from being Firestorm completely, so that he can die, and allow Jax to, like, live his life on, and not have Jax suffer, um, as badly as he's suffering from his injuries, so it's actually, like, really, really sad to see, and even though I didn't shed tears, um, it was, it was very heartbreaking to watch because I do love Professor Stein so much. And Stein, I adore him. I adore Victor Garber. But he's going off to do something on Broadway in February or January. So, unfortunately, you know, that's what they had to do. They had to make that hard decision. And it was definitely heartbreaking, like, hearing the music and everybody essentially grieving Stein. And then they say, you know we're going to fight this fight for Stein. We're going to do this for the professor. And they get everybody together on the Wave Rider, and essentially Earth-X Oliver tells him, you know, we will leave in peace as long as you give us your Supergirl. And Oliver tells him, you know, I don't abandon my friends. And they go out, and they go completely in. Oliver doesn't even hesitate to kill Earth-X Oliver. Kara fighting evil Kara 
amazing. And essentially, we see the effects of Earth X Kara absorbing way too much solar radiation. She's about to like explode into this giant bomb. So Supergirl carries her off into space where she can like blow up that way. And then we see Barry and um, and Eobard fighting yet again for the first time in like a couple seasons and Eobard mockingly tells Barry you know oh I forgot you're above killing and essentially I'm actually kind of happy that Barry didn't kill Eobard because in all honesty even after you kill Eobard Thawne he always comes back because a different version of him always comes a different version of Eobard Thawne always comes back wearing some sort of a different face and Eobard even tells Barry mockingly you know I wonder what face I'll be wearing the next time we meet and that is probably teasing the trial of the flash where Barry snaps Eobard's neck killing him and he gets sent to jail for that and he gets put on trial so I thought that that was a really nice teaser moment and essentially they won they ended up winning the fight against the nazis from earth x and um i think one of the saddest moments was actually professor stein's funeral it was actually really really sad to see like jacks breaking down like that like i um i i honestly felt my heart breaking even though i didn't cry because with the flash tv show I rarely cry during it. Like, I only cried on, like, a couple of occasions. And that was Barry traveling back in time during season one to the night of his mother's murder. Um, him being in the Speed Force with Nora reading that childhood book to him, The Runaway Dinosaur. And I also, like, had tears welling in my eyes when Iris got stabbed by Savitar during the back half of season three. So, with the Flash TV show, I rarely shed tears i rarely shed tears over the show you know like watching it i barely cry but if it's like that but if it's like really really deep and i feel like so connected to a character that is honestly when i start to like get all welled up and i start to cry so i didn't cry for stein i didn't cry for stein don't kill me over that but i did feel my heart break over that a lot like a lot and um, and then shortly after Stein's funeral, um, we see everybody essentially saying their goodbyes and Iris and Barry talk about how they're just going to go to the courthouse, sign the papers and just get married like the legal way, not the religious way like they had planned. They, you know, they planned this huge wedding and essentially they realize like what they really do need is just the two of them together in like one setting and they even ask Oliver you know would you mind marrying us like right here and Oliver tells him you know we have to be in like some proximity of Star City to do that so Barry actually grabs Diggle and Diggle like vomits I love that I love it when Diggle like reacts to Barry's super speed it's always so funny when he like throws up over it because Oh, it's so funny. It always cracks me up when Diggle does that. It's so funny. And um, I actually did love the vows between Barry and Iris. But then Felicity um, interrupts and says, you know, I want to add on to it and marry Oliver here and now, too. Because even though, like, she's willing to, like, put aside her beliefs about, like, marriage just to be with Oliver because she wants to be with Oliver forever and she wants to live with him forever and have that forever. So, we're going to see how long that can last, but I don't know. I don't know, but it is here to stay for now. And so, they do share their vows together, and Diggle tells them, you know, no, Oliver Jonas Queen, Felicity Megan Smoke, Bartholomew Henry Allen, and Iris Ann West. You may now kiss your brides. And they kiss, and I honestly felt like that was a very sweet and touching moment between, like, both couples. I felt like that was the perfect way for them to, like, tie the knot together like that i felt like that was really really nice that they did that and yeah that is the final ending to this crossover event and i will be back next week with maybe a supergirl review or a flash review i'm gonna have to see what i can do but you know i'm i might do my flash review next week no actually i will do my flash review next week because barry's supposed to get captured by the thinker next week i'm not missing that so yeah 
I uh, will see you guys next week with my Flash review, and then I'm going to have an Arrow review, maybe a, Supergirl re maybe a Supergirl review, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys!